Yesterday's prophecies, today's headlines. This is the Hal Lindsey Report. And now, Hal Lindsey. Well, at this time, when we're approaching Christmas, I want to continue with a meditation on the wonder of what happened and took place on Christmas Day. The wonder of the person of Jesus, the Son of God. You know, the person that was created at the moment of conception of Jesus and Mary is the greatest miracle. Uh, it created the most unique person in all of eternity. Now let's look at how this happened. The angel Gabriel came to Mary uh, and uh, he explains to her what's going to take place. Listen carefully because these scriptures go far beyond just a beautiful poetic statement about it. In Luke chapter 1, we'll begin with verse 30. It says, And the angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And uh, the angel answered and said to her, Now it is this statement that is often just read through and overlooked as to its import. The angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. So, I raise a question that seems to be a stupid question. Who is the Son of God? You know, groups like the uh, Jehovah Witness, sometimes the Mormons, they use the statement that Jesus is the Son of God as proof that the Lord Jesus Christ is not co-equal and co-eternal with God the Father. They say if he's the Son of, then he had to have a time when he became. So he's not co-eternal and co-equal. And co but I want you to notice carefully what it says here. Who is the Son of God? It says again, now listen carefully. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The Holy Spirit, Mary, will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. So, when God caused Jesus to be conceived by Mary, it was done directly by God the Father, God the first person. And it is the holy offspring, the child that was conceived there and born of Mary, that would be called the Son of God. But the second person of the Godhead, who stepped out of eternity into time to become united with that human personality, that human person, that human nature is the one who lived forever. Now, the second person of the Godhead who created the universe didn't give up being God. He could not. But he joined himself inseparably forever to a true human nature. And that was what was conceived in Mary. So why is Jesus called the Son of God? Because his human nature was born from God himself. He had no human father. God himself is the human, uh, is, the, 
is the father of the human nature. He had a human mother, therefore he's truly human. But on the other hand, God himself was the father of that, that creation. And that's what Jesus was foreshadowing and what I quoted last time from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 and uh, through 7, when he said, and this is uh, a quote from what actually took place in Bethlehem when that little baby was born. God the second person was speaking here. Therefore, when he comes into the world, you see, he had to come into the world from heaven itself. When he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. That little child that was conceived by God himself in Mary was born as a body so that it could be joined to the second person and become the fulfillment of all the animal sacrifices that had predicted there was coming the ultimate sacrifice. And so he says, But a body you have prepared for me, in whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come, in the scroll of the books it has written me. In other words, his coming was predicted in many places. In the scroll of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Now, uh, this is further explained in John chapter 6. Did you know that seven times in John chapter 6, Jesus said, I have come down from heaven. Well, his human nature didn't come down from heaven, but his divine nature did. And there we have him claiming that uh, his divine nature is co-eternal and co-equal with God. Technically, in theology, we call this the hypostatic union. And this is what the church taught from the earliest centuries, because that's what the Bible teaches. And uh, so... We have here in John chapter 6, uh, beginning with uh, the 37th verse, it says, All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. It really says, I will never cast out. In other words, in eternity past, the Father gave to the second person uh, a number of people that would believe in him. He foresaw it. He, for, he foreknew every one of us that would believe in him. And so Jesus says, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And then he says, for I have come down from heaven. You see, this correlates exactly with what is said in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 through 7 where it says, when he comes into the world, that is when the second person steps out of eternity into time and takes on the body of Jesus. And he says, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, just as he said, I came to do the will of God. And here it explains what is that will. He says, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me. You want to know what God's basic will for the, for the son is? It says, this is the will of him who sent me that of all he has given me, I lose, literally in the Greek, not even one, but raise it up on the last day. Do you know that when you first came to believe in Jesus Christ, it was part of a divine oath between God the Father and God the second person wherein before the world was you were foreknown and God gave you to the Son and he says every one of those he has given me will come to me and he says his will is that I lose not even one who comes to me but raise him up on the last day 
once you come in faith to Jesus as your Savior, he is under oath and responsibility to the Father to fulfill his will to see that you're never lost. Now let that sink in. Now once again, he says it now from the, that was from the divine viewpoint. Here is the human viewpoint so you can understand it. In verse 40, for this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds or literally recognizes the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. And I myself will raise him up on the last day. You see, the divine side is he was given to the Son, and it, it is his responsibility to see that not one who comes to him is lost. And the human side is that of all those who recognize who the Son is, that he's God stepped out of heaven in a time and taken on a human nature. That he is the one that is the Savior of the world. And he says that everyone who comes to the Son and recognizes who he is and believes in him as the ultimate sacrifice who came to die for our sins, that he says that I will raise him up on the last day. What a Christmas gift, huh? The eternal Son of God. You see, the second person of the Godhead, who is the divine nature of that one person, Jesus Christ, had no beginning. What is it then that is the Son of God that had a beginning? It is the child that was conceived in Mary, the human nature of the Son of God. It is the human nature that is the Son of God because God himself is the Father of that human nature. Nothing could be more beautiful than to know that God and man are eternally joined together forever and that one of us came to die for us because he was the only one who qualified to die in our place for he had no sin. Merry Christmas because this is the greatest gift that could ever come to man. Receive the gift of pardon that that beautiful person came down from heaven to die for us. The body that was prepared for him is that human nature that he took in our place. And it's that human nature that died for you. Praise God. The Son of God has saved us. I'll be right back. One of the simplest poems I've ever heard was, He came to die on a cross of wood, yet made the hill on which it stood. Meditate on that. That's it for tonight. God willing, I'll see you next week. You've been watching the Hal Lindsey Report. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit hallindsey.com or call 1-888-RAPTURE.